Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the refrigeration cycle of a heat pump in heat mode. For more information on the refrigeration cycle and refrigerant charging, check out our Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning book. We have that link down in the description section below. In this picture, you're going to see the air handler over on the right-hand side in the upflow position, and in this case, the indoor coil is going to be referred to as the condenser coil. Over on the left-hand side of the exterior wall, you see that you have the outdoor heat pump unit, otherwise known as the outdoor unit. The coil of that in heating mode is referred to as the evaporator coil. You can follow along with the refrigerant states as we move through the refrigeration cycle with the refrigerant states legend up at the top. Anytime you see two colors inside the tube at the same time, one being a liquid and one being a vapor, that means that the refrigerant is in the saturated state. At step one, we have the low pressure, low temperature, superheated vapor entering the vapor compressor. And then at step two, we have the high pressure, high temperature, superheated vapor exiting. Remember that the compressor increases pressure, which therefore increases temperature. At step three, we have a high pressure, high temperature, superheated vapor traveling through the discharge line and heading towards the reversing valve. Then this superheated vapor travels through the reversing valve in step four, and it heads towards the vapor service valve. At step five, we have the high pressure, high temperature, superheated vapor traveling through the vapor service valve and heading into the indoor coil. In this case, since we're in heat mode, it's gonna be referred to as the indoor condenser coil. At step six, the superheated vapor enters into the condenser coil where it starts to de-superheat while it's in vapor form. In step seven, we have the superheated vapor refrigerant rejecting heat and lowering in temperature. This is referred to as de-superheating. At step eight, we have the superheated vapor continuing to reject heat until it's rejected enough heat to change into the saturated state, where liquid and vapor both exist at the same time. At step nine, we have the saturated refrigerant rejecting heat, but not lowering in temperature. Got to remember that any time that the saturated refrigerant is rejecting heat, it's not going to be lowering in temperature, but what is happening is that where it starts off near step eight, it's mainly a vapor and partially a liquid, but as it goes through the saturated state while it's rejecting heat, over by step 10, right before that, it's mainly a liquid and just partially a vapor. And then over at step 10, it turns into a complete liquid. After the refrigerant turns completely into a liquid at step 10, the liquid refrigerant then lowers in temperature over at step 11. This is referred to as the subcooling. This refrigerant is still considered a high pressure, high temperature refrigerant, but in this case, it's just lowering in temperature as a liquid. At step 12, the high pressure, high temperature subcooled liquid refrigerant bypasses through the inactive metering device and remains unchanged. At step 13, the subcooled liquid goes through the biflow filter dryer where the dryer traps any debris and any water. The filter dryer has a fixed capacity though due to its size. After the refrigerant flows through the filter dryer, it remains a subcooled liquid refrigerant. Step 14 is where you have the high pressure, high temperature, subcooled liquid refrigerant flowing through the liquid line service valve. Over at step 15, you have a high pressure, high temperature, subcooled liquid refrigerant entering the metering device. And then you have a low pressure, low temperature liquid on the other side. Now this liquid is going to quickly change into a 20% vapor, 80% liquid state as seen on step 16. This is due to the lack of pressure and the availability of space within the tubing. At step 16, you have the refrigerant entering into the evaporator. And at that point, the refrigerant is low enough in temperature to start to absorb heat energy from the outdoor air. Now, as the refrigerant is absorbing that heat energy from the outdoor air, it is not rising in temperature but it is actually able to store that heat energy within the saturated state of the refrigerant. The saturated refrigerant moves through the evaporator coil, absorbing heat energy, but it does not rise in temperature. It continues to do this as it moves through and past step 17. And as it continues to go through that coil, the amount of liquid decreases and the amount of vapor increases until it comes into the completely vapor state at step 18. Now remember this coil is referred to as the evaporator coil during heat mode, but the condenser coil during cooling mode. So to stay safe, you can just refer to that as the outdoor coil. After step 18 and continuing through step 19, the low pressure, low temperature vapor refrigerant continues to absorb heat energy, but now it's increasing in temperature as a vapor. At step 20, you have the low pressure, low temperature superheated vapor traveling through the reversing valve and going towards the accumulator tank. At step 21, you have the low pressure, low temperature superheated vapor entering into the accumulator tank, and it should come out as a superheated vapor. So you shouldn't have saturated or liquid refrigerant exiting the accumulator and entering into the compressor because that would damage the compressor. So if that outdoor quill on a heat pump freezes during the middle of winter and the refrigerant does not end up getting superheated before it enters into the accumulator, 
The job of the accumulator is to make sure that only vapor exits that tank. When you don't have superheated vapor entering into the accumulator, what's going to happen is that accumulator is going to start to fill up with liquid at the bottom of the tank, but the, the suction is up higher than the liquid, as you can see in this picture right here. Also, as you have the liquid refrigerant at the bottom, you're also going to have oil at the bottom of the accumulator tank. There's a small metering device in the suction tube at the bottom of the accumulator tank to pull that oil up from the bottom and a little bit of liquid into that suction tube. It's going to flash that liquid into a vapor and that superheated vapor is going to enter the compressor at step 22. That's when the refrigeration cycle starts all over again at step one. For more information on the refrigeration cycle, check out our website and also check out our book. We have those links down in the description section below. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, click here. If you want to subscribe, click here. And if you want to see another HVACR training video, click right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.